Eileen Meyer's paintings reflect well-defined concerns, her predominant passions. Her paintings give us the clues we need to understand what these concerns and passions are. As Eileen says, her style is her own invention. She feels it is closest to surrealism. Her work also carries some sense of expressionism, not inconsistent with that. Surrealism refers to a wide array of styles, typically with the use of color and imagery that is fantastic, derived from the realm of dreams. She shows us a world of phantasmagoria, that shifting realm between the imaginary and the real, between the layers of the mind that deal with reality and those below that constantly transform the shapes of our hopes and fears. And she gives her figures a sharpness of realistic detail that makes us see many as real figures in a world we don't know. Well, they've decided that it isn't really surrealism. It's closer to surrealism than it is to anything else, but it's still my own style of surrealism. Surrealism generally revolves around dreams, uh, Freudian dreams type of things. Mine are not so much dreams as a combination of reality and fantasy. Like many eminent artists, Eileen is self-taught. If such a mysterious world of beauty and power can emerge from an artist without instruction, we must wonder whether there is really instruction that helps a person become a truly original artist. Artists learn most from unimpeded involvement with their own work. I don't think I relate anything to my childhood at all except that when I was a child, my mother was an artist, and I kept trying to copy her paintings, or actually her drawings, and I was very bad, but she was so good, I dreamt of being like her. What does it take to become an artist? Are draftsmanship and color sense enough, or is something more necessary? Um, when I was painting, when I first decided to paint, um, I really didn't have any day-to-day -day life other than getting up, painting, going to bed, getting up, painting, going to bed, getting up, painting. And that's all I did for quite a few years. I was devoted and dedicated and persistent, and I was going to succeed no matter what. Eileen Meyer's work, viewed either in the frame of reference of aesthetic theories or against the background of traditional symbolism, fuses her knowledge of various cultures into forms of beauty and power often charged with psychological and spiritual truths to form transcultural storylines. Her symbols seek to embody not just the various facets of life, but what is inherently possible in the processes of the evolution of life on Earth. In creating this poetry on canvas, Eileen struggled hard. The effort was well worth it. Her first exhibition was an unforgettable experience. The first time I had ever seen my paintings hanging in a gallery, um, it was my time to enter on the opening, opening night. And I walked through the doors, and all these people were there inside the gallery waiting for me. And I looked at my paintings on the wall, and I looked at the people, and I turned around and ran out. It felt like I was on the wall. It took several years before I could get used to having such exposure of myself being looked at, because that's the way it felt when these paintings were on the wall and people were looking at it. It felt like that was me on the wall. So I eventually became detached, and now I quite enjoy watching people's reactions. There are some people that don't like my work, but they're entitled to that. There's a lot of people that really love my work. One aspect of Eileen Meyer's creativity manifests itself in the way she uses paint on canvas. Her positioning of human and mythical figures, imagined and real, and of animals, imagined and real, 
transported into unlikely environs, surrounded by various permutations of evocative geometric figures, contribute towards creating an eerie, often startling, three-dimensional psychedelic effect. The impact of her work on viewers is best summed up by Eileen herself. There were extremely wonderful comments. Many people said that it, brought, it reminded them of something that they had lost. It made them feel good about themselves. Uh, some people said it, it's caused them to begin again, to see life a different way. For most people, it seems like it just it caused them happiness. Parts of Eileen's visionary world reminded her audience of what they felt they have lost, while other parts seemed to embody the future, beckoning towards itself. Well, in the United States, I was published by Omni Magazine. They did quite a series of uh, articles and showing my paintings in one of their magazines. Around this time, Eileen's mind was overflowing with ideas for new paintings. In the world of artists, the stakes for survival are high, and she found her way to keep her vision alive by exhibiting frequently. I showed for about 10 years in Seattle, between Seattle and Scottsdale, Arizona, and I had sellout shows every year, but it became so hectic that every single year I'd have no paintings left and I'd have to bring show and then I ran into the Japanese and they wanted to promote me in Japan and so I have shown exclusively in Japan since about 1991. Eileen's work filled many Japanese with great enthusiasm. Up to 1500 people visited her exhibition every day. Insightful reviews of her work and loving reactions to it, coming from this part of the Oriental world, with its own long and distinguished history of artistic work, made her know she had succeeded in sharing a sense of life too deep to be confined by her own culture. A huge show for me in Japan, done by uh, Fuji Television, Fuji Sanko did a huge event in Tokyo and Osaka and uh, in house temples in Nagasaki. Eileen metamorphoses traditional symbols from different cultures to convey her own meaning. The recurring presence of the planet Earth becomes a unifying symbol for all that needs love and sustains hope. The world being put in the paintings also kind of makes you feel like it's of another world you're able to stand back and look at the world differently than what you would ordinarily look at. And you see a pretty prehistoric animal. In my paintings, it generally represents the past and where we're all headed. Eileen's paintings are not preconceived. A little sketch grows and grows and slowly becomes a painting. Generally, my thoughts are quite vacant when I'm coming up with a new generally do a very tiny little drawing that only contains rhythm and lines and absolutely nobody would know what it is, not even, even myself, but if the lines and the rhythm look interesting, then I'll work on it and turn it into something. And quite frequently it takes two weeks to make one drawing before I even start painting it on the canvas. As each painting grows, new ideas take shape, while some older ones give way. The shapes and sizes of canvases vary, as does the time to conceptualize and execute each painting. Approximately, it depends on the size, but the larger ones take between one and two months, and that's eight to 10 hours a day, seven days a week.
Eileen's use of color may at first seem unusual, even enigmatic. She endeavors all the time to create original hues and tones to establish a sometimes subtle, sometimes stark portrayal of themes and characters. I rarely use anything straight out of the tube. I usually mix my own colors. Eileen's paintings reveal her deep involvement with the meanings different cultures embody in their symbolism. I take elements from any culture that I find interesting at the time. All cultures are interesting, just that some are more artistically interesting than others. Eileen's Medusa is beautiful. Each hair ends in the face of a personified force believed to shape human destiny. Medusa comes from the ancient Grecian mythology, Babylonian mythology. It's a matter of a beauty and the beast type of situation. Here Eileen shows her iconoclasm. She turns the whole mythic concept of beauty and ugliness upside down. Medusa was a very beautiful woman and she used to steal her sister's boyfriends away from her all the time and her sister got very angry at this so she cast a spell on her and set her in exile to a far distant island and she also cast another spell on her that uh, changed her hair into serpents and any man that would look at her would be turned to stone. I chose Medusa because of the fantastic uh, attitude that she has created in the people. And instead of making her very ugly and gruesome, I've made her very beautiful. And instead of her killing her men, she attracts them again, but this time in the form of art. So she's actually one power hit, bringing together all the cultures from around the world. Eileen recreates the mythological story. Even though Medusa's sister, out of desire for revenge, has cast a spell on Medusa to turn her hair into snakes, Medusa's beauty endures through her metamorphosis. Eileen refuses to acknowledge the triumph of vengeful passions over the endurance of beauty. All that is beautiful has the power to turn tragic horror into grace and new meaning. Eileen includes the latest scientific and technological developments in her work. She was one of the first artists to depict a compact disc in a couple of her paintings on the topic of music. Well, I really can't explain the fact that we now have CDs when I produced them 15 years ago. Uh, there's not a lot to say about that, except that maybe I can see that far in the future, or I was just lucky. As with the CDs, Eileen's ability to encompass human inventiveness is evident from the suggestion of test tube fertilization in a couple of her paintings. If I'm psychic, then I don't think about it uh, quite for a person to stop and think that they're psychic, they have to do a lot of meditating on it. And if I did that, I wouldn't get any work done. So if I'm psychic, I apply it to the paintings. And quite frequently, I'm five to 10 years ahead of the times. At the time that I began doing those things, I had a great dream of making an animated series. I wanted to do cartoons, I wanted to do films, I wanted to do animation, and I was creating a new species that would make something of a fantastic delight. 
that was new on the market. I haven't finished them yet. I still have a few more that I want to produce. I want to create. While some of her animals are as real as earthly ones, others are unlikely species her imagination has bred, such as Zebraceros, a cross between a rhinoceros and a zebra. She feels art is entitled to take liberties and fashions her animals with humor. She says she has equal respect for all creatures of creation. I don't want it anywhere near what the real animal is. I respect the real animal. I respect my new little animals too, but I want them to be totally different and new. I like to think of my animals as chameleons. They can change color at will. Some people who saw Eileen's imagined animals believe such animals might actually be created one day through genetic engineering. Who knows? A geneticist may decide to make what she has already seen. Eileen's exhibits leave a deep impact on viewers. Quite a few people have said that my paintings have changed their lives. Cause some people to buy art that have never bought art before in their lives. Uh, I think some of the things that I do have opened up a different field, a different style, a different train of thought. I prefer to have an event rather than just put one painting in each gallery. I want an event, I want a big show. piece them out one by one. They all belong together when I have a show. Because when I see people looking at my paintings when they're all together, it's like they're walking through a fantasy they've never been through before. As Eileen thought out a philosophy of her own. I don't really have a philosophy about it. She shows concern for metaphysical problems, such as what is real even as appearances keep changing. What inspires her characters and stories? If I have a gift, then I want to share it with the world. But I, don't, I can't really call that a philosophy. Some filmmakers seriously consider using the figures and situations of some of her paintings to make animated films, perhaps as a series of short stories. Yes, I can see uh, a lot of applications that each individual piece can have. I can see uh, animations, as I said before. I can see stage plays. I can see operas. I can see uh, children's books. Choice. Eileen's paintings are not static images. She weaves stories into many of her paintings. Some filmmakers seriously consider using the figures and situations of some of her paintings to make animated films. I would love to work with film producers. It's an awful lot of the work that I've done that uh, each painting contains some powerful stories. What factors or important events in Eileen Meyer's own past have had a significant influence in defining the contours of her work, her images, the way she juxtaposes them, the stories she selects, and the presence of the mysterious element in her work. What I do is probably the result of my past experiences, at least that's what a psychologist would say. Eileen, do you believe in reincarnation? Yes. Yes is not enough. You'll have to explain. <laughs> yes, I believe I was reincarnated. 
I haven't decided yet whether I plan on coming back, but from what I've been told, I've been around many, many times before, and I'm supposed to be an old soul. So, maybe I've been around so much that I have all these things inside me I have to share with the world. is not just beautiful or complex, it is profound. It has to be seen, read, and thought over for a long time. As she says, she would rather that people view a collection of her work all at one place than see one painting here or another there. Most of us who know a bit of her work would love to be among those fortunate enough to see at least a few of her paintings together.